Stranger Things Season 3 came out last Thursday, and I just finished watching it, so now we're going to review. Just so you know, this is a non-spoiler review, so if you haven't finished the show, or you don't intend on watching it right away, then you can still watch this review, because it has no spoilers. But if you don't want to watch this show, still watch the review, and if you guys really want to hear my spoiler thoughts, just let me know in the description, and I'll consider doing a spoiler talk video. But before we get any further, make sure to press the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, leave a like if you like the video, and take a look at the description for a bunch of different links. Without any further ado, let's start talking about the good. Right out of the gate, uh, no pun intended. Right off the bat, um, no pun intended either. All puns aside, what I'm trying to say is that right away it's very apparent this season is different from the others. From the first few episodes, you can immediately tell that this season doesn't rely as much on horror and scary things as the last season. This is more character driven. What I mean by that is that in the last two seasons, what kind of carried the show was the horror and the monsters. The show is very reliant around the characters and their relationships with one another. Of course, we have our continued relationships like Mike and Elle and Max and Lucas, but even then, they take those and they kind of turn them around so they're really different from the last season. And new bonds start to appear like Max and Elle become really good friends, Steve and Robin, the new character from the ice cream shop, start becoming good friends, Hopper and Joyce are together more this season, and... You expect all these payoffs for the relationships, and no spoilers, but they you think that Steve and Robin are going to get together, and they completely flip that on its head. You think Joyce and Hopper might get together, and they completely flip that on its head. That's another thing about this season that subverts your expectation. It sets up all these tropes and goes completely away from them. And this season is very reliant on 80s nostalgia more than others. Of course, they go to the movie theater a couple times. There's two 80s movies playing, 80s classics. There's a plot line that is very reminiscent of Die Hard. There's a certain character, and I can't really say any more about him than that because it's kind of a spoiler, but it's very clear that he is meant to be like Terminator. He gives off very Terminator vibes just the way he acts, talks. It's much like Terminator. And that aspect of this show really works because they've already set up the 80s tone and style in the last two seasons and you believe it. So in this, they can just go all out with the nostalgia and it really works. Another big part of that is Starcourt Mall. Now, Starcourt Mall is, is kind of the main focus of this season. It's where the characters spend a lot of their time and it's in pretty much every episode. And you can tell the set designers put a lot of time into making Starcourt Mall. It feels like it's in the 80s and that's a very good thing. And finally, the second half of the season is where it really picks up. It keeps going, and it doesn't stop going. Every episode is a cliffhanger. It leaves you always wanting more. And then when you do get to the end, and there's nothing more to see, the ending is very satisfying. All the payoffs, they subvert your expectations, but there's still payoffs, and you feel satisfied. The ending, they could have left it there that season three could have been the last season from the ending they gave but then there is a post credit scene kind of weird i missed it the first viewing so if you're watching the finale stay through the credits and because there's a credit scene from here let's move into the bad and there's not really too much to say in this category overall this is a very strong season probably it's best and there's not that many negatives that take away from the experience however if i had to go and say the one thing i didn't really like this season especially the first half, does take a little while to get going. Obviously, it forms your character bonds that you all want. It sets up character development and plot tropes that are later flipped on their head. But by doing this, it does take a little long to get into the scary monster fun action kind of stuff. Once it does, though, it's really good and it pays off enormously. And finally, the verdict. Overall, a very strong season and enjoyable season of Stranger Things. Probably its best. It's a little slow in the first half, but the second half more than makes up for it and provides for a very entertaining, mysterious, and subverting your expectations season. Just make sure you stick around for the post credit scene. Oh, and one more thing. Leave your gosh darn doors open three inches.